I would like to call the order of the uh, uh, board of commissioners uh, meeting tonight, and we do have a forum here. Uh, Commissioner Allen is um, out sick, and um, our chair is uh, just just returning back from uh, Europe, so uh, he needed a little time to catch up from there. So. Uh, we do have a form here tonight. We'll start off uh, tonight with the Pledge of Allegiance and Invocation. And the Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Staff Sergeant Chris Elwin. Yes, sir. Is that correct? Thank you so much for going into it. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Stand. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. Under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we can uh, pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity for us to gather here tonight. God, we ask you to keep our um, our minds focused on the will of the people here and and doing what makes you proud of uh, of us. God, we ask you to uh, place your hands of protection over our residents, um, keep them safe. Uh, help them be prosperous and uh, just lead us in your will. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. And, uh, so, John White, if I want to put your official, John White, if you want to put your official, official with you. Uh, when you can get to that point, you'll be up. Well, that's right, one minute, two minutes. Thank you. <clears throat> all right, the next uh, item on the agenda is uh, recognition of elected officials. Do we have any elected officials here? We've got one past elected official here would like to recognize uh, Mayor Alexander. I appreciate all your service. Okay. Next item is recognition of veterans. Any veterans here, if you please stand. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Uh, recognition of county department heads. Uh, if you please stand and introduce yourselves. Chris Kirk, county finance director. Allison Moon, Human Resources. Chris Green, Tax Administrator. Thanks for all your work, too. All your help uh, representing our county. Next item on the agenda is a uh, motion to adopt the proposed agenda. That's been posted. Is there any um, questions about the agenda? I'll make a motion to accept the agenda. Let's do it. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Next item is citizen recognition. Karen, do we have anybody sign up? Did anybody come tonight wishing to speak before the commission and not sign up? Not have a chance to sign up? All right. Seeing none, we'll move on to the next item, the consent agenda, and we'll turn that over to our uh, county manager. Eddie, or Eddie, please <laughs> Vice Chairman, uh, there are eight items on the consent agenda for your consideration this evening. Item A, the minutes of the March 21st, 2013 joint meeting with Rutherford and Polk County and the April 2nd, 2013 regular meeting. Item B, the tax collector's monthly report from March 2013. At the end of March, county real and personal property taxes were 95.82% collected versus a March 2012 collection rate of 95.61. Item C, the tax assessor's, assessor's monthly report for March 2013. At the end of March, there were abatements of $17,108 and supplements of $12,792. Item D, the request for approval of the uh, Cleveland County Juvenile Crime Prevention Council's annual plan for FY 2013-2014 including approximate allocation from the state for $277,984 for the operating program. Item E, the budget amendment in the health department. We're asking the budget $100 in donations from the Shelby Lions Club to be used for high exam. Item F, the budget amendment in the health department. We're asking the budget $375 in donations from the Cleveland County Medical Society to be used for asthma stomach cancer. Item G, the budget amendment in the health department. 
Matthew budgeted thirteen thousand one hundred dollars in state grant funds to be used for salaries and supplies to promote healthy lifestyle activities. Item H is a budget amendment in the health department. Matthew budget eleven thousand seven hundred and forty six dollars in state grant funds to be used for salaries and departmental supplies and environmental health. That's all I have this question. Commissioners, you had opportunity to review these uh, they were sent prior to the meeting. Is there any questions about the consent agenda? I understand a motion. So moved. Thank you. And we got a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, special recognition. And uh, I'm proud that we've got Christina Alexander here tonight. She comes with a family that uh, always has been, been very supportive of our community. So, Christina, we're excited to have you here. Today. Thank you for having me here tonight, and I just wanted to take a few minutes of your time and talk about my Cases for Comfort project, which I started in August of 2012 for the Levine Children's Hospital in Charlotte, and I was inspired to start this project for a friend of mine that could stay there for Crohn's disease, and she was always talking about how bored she was, and so I feel like it would be fun to have a craft activity for kids. So I thought of the idea to get sewing cases and fabric markers for them to decorate while they were there. And so I've just been out in the community and getting donations. And I have a Facebook page, Cases for Comfort, if anyone wants to follow along the process of my project. And here's a sewing case I made. At the start, I tested out the materials. And they seem to work pretty good. So. And this recently, Friday afternoon, I went to Cleveland Regional Medical Center here in Shelby, and I donated toy cases for kids out in Cleveland County and in Shelby who would need the assistance of our hospital here. And here's the bags. I put them each in little bags, and they each get four markers, and they have a little pack to themselves. So, and that's just what my project's about, and thank you for letting me come talk about it. Sure, that's great. Commissioners, do you have any comments or any questions for this end? I, I think when uh, we get the youth involved like that, kind of looking into the back and back, but I know what you're doing, being involved in, in something to do with the community, I, I congratulate you on being involved and supporting you. So, what can we do to support you in your program? If you want to donate some pillowcases and fabric markers, that would be good. And also, um, I've been getting checks and money too, so I can buy the materials as well. So, if y'all feel the way to do that, that'd be good. How many pillowcases have you all through so far? I've gotten 600 full of beans and about 50 in Shelby. Christine, I think what you're doing is, a, is an awesome thing that you're working with kids that are dealing with tough times in their lives. and. Uh, and again, knowing your family and how much y'all care about the community, it's, it's evident uh, um, where your heart is. So we really appreciate that. We appreciate you visiting the kids that are here in Cleveland County as well. We're excited about the um, opportunity with uh, the changes with the hospital. There, uh, I guess you already know they're doing the Levine's Children's Center here. Um, so it's going to give us even more opportunity. Maybe we can open more cold cases with them. So that's awesome. Thank, Thank you so you very much. much. Thank you. Um, also, it would uh, help with regional economic development. 
uh, and planning infrastructure, uh, which would uh, give support to uh, our potential industries and our existing industries here in uh, our three counties. Um, so the purpose of this, obviously this is a very detailed and extensive process, but I guess the, the idea here is for the, all three counties to jointly gather together to just at least request that it be considered and studied in the future. Um, we did, at the end of the resolution, um, make sure that we stated in the resolution that uh, we would support this as long as the construction on Highway 74 bypass would not be delayed, uh, which I did confirm uh, with our division uh, engineer that uh, this would not have any effect on US 74 bypass funding. That is the uh, resolution that you see there. Um, any questions or comments? I, I think just to add to it, one of the reasons that uh, we did not have the meeting with the three county is the way the RPOs and the MPOs rank the project now with the skip over and the 100 points. I feel I, I think Ted probably might be familiar with some of it, most people don't. So in the projects we've got, we've got so many points, like the uh, MPO's got uh, 1,200 points, I think, 1,200 points, for all the projects. So we got the thank you, said, okay, we got 1,200, both counties got 12, both got 12. So if they can loan us points from another district to increase, maximum we can do is 100 points in our county, but if we can gain points from other counties, and this is supposed to have some bearing after the DOT gets the ranking that each one of the groups do to move it up the ladder. So our hope was that if we could borrow points and get in on foot in the other county, maybe we can move this project up because completion day is scheduled for 2030. We would like to have a whole lot quicker possible, but uh, in the bypass now, they are letting some of it in December, that the first portion will be left in December. I think the truck is the first place in the car in somewhere around May, but there's about five or six or seven stages of that, that thing to go through. And that's what we're talking about trying to devise a way to speed it up because this bypass around Seattle will be a benefit to Rockton and Polk County also. Well said. Thank you. Now I'll make a motion that we do the resolution. I'll second it. All right, we've got a first and second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Next item on the agenda is a resolution celebrating the 105th birthday of the United States Army Reserve. Um, I was honored to be contacted by uh, its retired Army Reserve Major General Skip McCartney. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, and uh, I would uh, appreciate it if you would come up and maybe um, address just for a few more minutes or a few minutes. He is the U.S. Army Reserve Ambassador um, for our area. So, um. well, I appreciate the opportunity to come forward, and I appreciate the Vice Chairman, who uh, she were quickly on top of this thing after I asked you to put this on the agenda last week. So, uh, thank you for your help. Uh, the Army Reserve. Although it can trace its history uh, back to a, a national citizen soldier uh, force uh, in the French and Indian War, formally the government never established an, an Army Reserve until 1908. And, and that's the birthday we're celebrating 105 years of at this time. Uh, Army Reservists since 1908 have uh, done everything uh, to worked with the Works Progress Administration during the, uh, the Depression, uh, because initially in, in 1908, we were established as a medical officer reserve, because the Army did not have sufficient medical assets in its active force to do all the things that needed to be done to take care of soldiers. Uh, so a lot of the stuff that we did for a number of years up until World War II was medical related. Uh, in World War II, the Army Reserve participated fully with a number of divisions, including, believe it or not, the 82nd Airborne Division was originally an Army Reserve. 
so from the act force after World War II. And we've also participated in every single conflict that the United States has gone into uh, since World War II. Right now, there are about a little over 200,000 Army Reservists across the country and over 700 communities across the country. And we have about 12,000 soldiers that are currently deployed uh, protecting this country. Even though we're drawing down in Afghanistan and have already left Iraq, we still have 12,000 Army Reservists that are deployed right now uh, taking care of business with this country's taking care of what we need to do to keep this country safe. The Army Reserve is somewhat different from the National Guard. A lot of people get us confused with the National Guard in some ways. Uh, the National Guard is, is a state uh, organization that's run and, and uh, operated by the governor through the, the uh, adjutant general of the state. The Army Reserve is actually a national force, a federal force under Title 10 of the United States Code, which is can be more easily brought to bear and mobilized in the National Guard. You have to go through certain processes of getting permission through the governor and this sort of thing. But the Army Reserve also has a lot of different kind of operations than the National Guard. The National Guard has a lot of com combat organizations. We have a lot of combat support, combat service support, a lot of medical still, probably about a third of the medical assets of the Army are in the Army Reserve. We also have a good number of lawyers, and I was a lawyer, but not a lawyer in the Army Reserve. Uh, we also do a lot of engineer work and uh, a lot of other combat support, combat service support type operations. And uh, we just thank you for your, your consideration helping us celebrate the 105th anniversary of the Army Reserve and thanking all those 200,000 soldiers for what they do each and every day to keep this country safe. Thank you very much. Thank you. We did have a resolution that we prepared and I think it was, I know everyone has had a chance to read over it and, uh, and uh, is there any comments we have commissioners? You want us to read the, our secretary to read the resolution? This is a resolution celebrating the 105th birthday of the United States Army Reserve, honoring the commitment, dedication, and service to America, and offering our continuing support to our soldier, soldiers. Whereas in 1908, the nation's leaders knew that the most up-to-date medical experience resided in the civilian sector, created the first reservoir of trained officers in a reserve status known as the Medical Reserve Corps. And whereas today, over 20% of the Army's assets lie within the Army Reserve. And whereas in 1916, Congress passed the National Defense Act, creating the Officers Reserve Corps, the Enlisted Reserve Corps, and the Reserve Officers Training Corps, later named the Organized Reserve Corps, ORC, all of which are forerunners of the current Army Reserve. And whereas, in both world wars, Army Reserve soldiers, soldiers answered the call of duty. In World War I, 89,500 reserve officers were mobilized, and during World War II, 200,000 members of the ORC participated, with reserve officers providing 29% of the Army's officers. And whereas, in 1952, the legislation renamed the ORC as the Army Reserve and then divided it into three reserves, a ready reserve, a standby reserve, and a retired reserve. Legislation also provided that reserve units have 24 training, 24 training days and up to 17 days of annual training. And whereas the Army Reserve has been an integral part of numerous conflicts, more than 70 Army Reserve units were deployed to the Korean Peninsula well over 120,000 soldiers have provided combat support and combat service support during Operation Desert Shield Storm, and others provided in Somalia, Haiti, Bosnia, Kosovo, Operation Enduring Freedom, Operation Noble Eagle, and Operation Iraqi Freedom. And currently, over 12,000 Army Reserve soldiers 
infant word, soldiers, are currently deployed around the world. And whereas the role of the Army Reserve has changed over time, moving from a strategic reserve to an operational force, the Army Reserve provides resources and training to first responder organizations across the nation, trains soldiers, implements national objectives, keeps the Army mobile, and enables the Army to do more with constrained resources. And whereas the Army Reserves make up 20% of the Army's organized units while providing one half of the Army's combat support and one fourth of its mobilization-based expansion capabilities. Now therefore, be it resolved that by this resolution, we celebrate the 105th birthday of the United States Army Reserve honor its continuing service to America, and offer them our thanks and continued support. Adopted this the 16th day of April, 2013, and signed by all our county commissioners. Commissioners, you heard the resolution. I would like to say the remarks for whenever we step down uh, off the podium here, but um, you heard the resolution. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you so much. Um, if we could have, if y'all would mind coming up front, sure. I'd like to get a picture with you and present this to you. Can everybody come in? small token um, by no way comes anywhere close to what we owe you. So but please accept this for Thank you very much. Well it's up on behalf of all the army reserves. Thank you. Across the country. Thank you. Here's a one of our county pins as well. We give these to visitors whenever they come in and uh, you can share that with the family. So let me, let me just make a real quick comment. I would just pass this on to Bob Hill but I, I would not have been able to do what I did 30 some years and spending many, many days on active duty uh, away from my civilian job. I hadn't had to support people like my law partners, Bobby Elton and Les Harper. So, uh, I, I feel like publicly after all these years, I didn't say something. Commissioner, do you have any comments? Yeah, I'd like to congratulate you. Like I said, we've been there about a while since we were in service and reserves. I'd like to say a special thank you too. And I, one of the most vivid memories I have in my life, I guess, is as a child, when I was seven or eight years old, uh, I remember being my grandmother's, and she had she received that um, great visit of um, her son uh, being taken away from us in the invasion of the all. So ever since that time, even though I did not serve in the military, it certainly holds a special place in my heart. All I can do is sincerely thank you for everything that you do to help protect this country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, uh, I'll turn around and have you any comments? Just thank you for all of you. Thank you to your families, too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No worries.
like to like to be in you also. And, uh, this is an official county pin, and we'd like for you to wear that uh, wherever you go. Be proud of it. Be as proud of it as we are to wear ours. Thank you so much for what you do in our community. Thank you. The last item on the agenda um, for down the commissioner's reports now. Um, Mr. Holbrook, do you have anything to report this time? Uh, I'd just like to, again, say a special tribute to Skip and all the military team stuff. Uh, I guess during the opportunity of working with the American Legion people from across the country uh, and seeing and experiencing.
this is probably 25 or so um, residents from Canada come in and want to learn more about um, our county and um, our county government as well. So that was a, a neat experience. Clifford Extravaganza at the fairgrounds uh, went very well. Uh, they raised some money there to pay for medical needs for um, animals at the um, uh, at the animal shelter. And um, there's a, there's a lot going on in the next couple weeks as well. And uh, that brings us to the last item on there. Um, uh, commissioners, I need a recess to reconvene uh, for our goal setting work session on uh, April 30th at 5:30. Okay. I make a motion that we reset, reconvene for a work session on the 30th at 5:30. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All those in favor, sir. Aye. Thank you. All right. There's no other business for the county. I'll entertain a motion to. Thank <laughs> you.